No, let me let me tell you something. Everything's all messed up. I'm sitting there waiting for uh, you know, I've seen this in like Starbucks, sub shops. You know, you're sitting there. I'm the only one in line. I'm the only person in the building. Place my order, and I'm waiting there by the table. And they start handing out drinks and orders for people who aren't there. It's like Mary, Tim, Jim, John, Susan. They're just handing out, and I'm looking around like. Who are these orders for? Yes, they're mobile orders. But the point is, why are they taking priority? I'm sitting in the store. I'm physically there. It's like I, I felt like I was in the sixth sense. Like they're they're putting out drinks for ghosts that I couldn't see. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com. Today is part five in our Getting Started with Graph series. And I'm going to show you how we can group devices with certain attributes or whatever. Basically how we can create groups and put devices in groups using uh, the graph and the PowerShell modules. Well, if I do mobile order and I'm the one on the other side, yes, I do expect uh, my order to take precedence over the people in the store. But that has nothing to do with it. Get Rubik's. Solving for the modern workplace. So let's go to the whiteboard real quick. So far, we've been performing actions that use the get method. All right. So if we look, uh, something right here, I think that's important is the method. The method dictates the action that we're going to do to the call. So we've been doing get, right? So the get method means get Microsoft.com beta devices. That'll get me all devices or if I specify a specific device ID, it'll get that device. But when we want to take action, it's not a get, it's actually called a post. So a post, and we did this yesterday briefly when we talked about, um, when we were looking at the admin test, we did make a post call. But what a post does is actually create something for us. So in this case, we want to create a group. So my call, because Entra, you know, starts after beta and all the groups are in Entra, not Intune, would be, graph.microsoft.com, I'm gonna use the beta version, and then I can go to groups. But what am I posting exactly? This is where the documentation really comes in handy. So we know we have to make a post, and it actually will tell us that here. Um, so if you look at the documentation of your groups, post dash groups, the dash is after the method. So of course for us, that's right after there. So we got that so far. So we're posting to groups, but what do we post? Well, whatever you post is called a body. Right, so a body is kind of the structure that we're posting up to the graph. So take a look at this. You can see an example for creating a Microsoft 365 group. Um, and we can see right here, now even though we're working with PowerShell, we're not gonna click on the module um, because that's not gonna give us the full story. So we wanna look here at the actual JSON. And this is not dissimilar than what you get back. If I were to go to, whoa, we made a big mess here. If I were to go get for groups, you're gonna see all the data come back within the groups. But a lot of this data comes from the group being created. It doesn't mean we have to put all this there. So what's nice is the documentation is showing us kind of the bare minimum of what we need. So we have to form our own JSON, right? So we have to form this ourselves and put in what we want, the description, the name of the group, right? The type, if it's mail enabled, security enabled, all that stuff, we put that in. And then from there, we can post this up here. So once I have that data, when I make the post call, it sends that to group and then it will actually generate a group ID for me. So let's go ahead and talk about creating a group and let's put together a group of all company owned devices. Maybe you have some personal BYOD devices and companies. So we want to go ahead and create this group and it'll be a dynamic group, a dynamic group looking for the property of ownership and that'll be company. So we know that our method is going to have to be invoke mg graph request. Method is a post because we're making a group. And the URI is https graph.microsoft.com slash beta. And we're going to say groups. Now it will need a body parameter because we're posting something. So we know what our method will be to post, but now we need a body. So we have something to post up there. So we're going to do that as a script block. So at two curly braces. All right. So we're going to fill in the data that'll be in the JSON. So display name of the group will be company owned devices. Description will be corporate. I don't know. You can think of that. I'm not good at that. 
Um, security enabled will be yes. It'll be a security group. Now group type. Group types will be at parentheses and inside there, we're just gonna say dynamic. This is gonna be a dynamic group. Again, dynamic membership. Uh, what did I do after that? Something got messed up. Oh, I didn't do the quote at the end. Perfect. Under that, we're gonna need membership rules, right? Because it is a dynamic group. So the membership rules will be device, device ownership equals, uh, we'll put this in double quotes, company. And then membership rule processing state will be on, so it knows to start processing. Um, and even though it's not a male group, we have to tell it that male enabled equals false and male nickname will be nickname, I guess. We're not really using that. Now, if we were to just run this body by itself, that'll give us that, right? And that really doesn't look like the JSON we need. But the good news is because of PowerShell, we can just do a pipe convert, oh, convert to JSON. If I run this again with the convert to JSON after it, and I call the body, that looks exactly like what we need, right? So let's go ahead and try to, oh, and we need to put the parameter there. So body is what we're posting. All right, let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so that posted and let's go look at it. So let's go to all groups. Uh, it's a corporate devices. This looks like it. All right. It's here. It's going to take a while to process. Oh, well, it's, it's going, but let's look at the dynamic membership rules we created. Dynamic device ownership equals company. All right. So it got it and it created the group for us. This was a very interesting video and it took a long time to film. Basically, uh, what started out as something simple ended up being very complex, but still very cool. And bled into another issue I want to talk about. So this video, as far as creating device groups with PowerShell graph and making them dynamic, um, that should get you started. So we know how to post and, you know, we learned a little bit about that, uh, which I think is cool because we did some posting yesterday, but we really didn't talk about it to go really deep <laughs> into kind of correlating different attributes between Intune and Entra. Today's members video is going to go kind of in depth. And it's going to show us another way to look at groups that goes well beyond this. So if you want to stomach it, if you like today, but you want to go a lot deeper, make sure you join the YouTube membership so you can have access to that. And we'll be seeing you.